right. What else do I need to mention? We'll have a quiz in the lab this afternoon. That'll be on fire. Uh, let's see here. There was a wildlife society meeting today at noon. I'll be there if you can. And then let's do lecture. Oh, there will not be a video from today's lab because we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, so there won't be any video from that lab, but we are still having lab today. Just not going to record it. All right. So lecture 15, uh, like I said, we talked about climate change on Monday and the videos that I sent out or the video I sent out was about climate change and wildlife. Hopefully you'll watch that. You'll be ready for a quiz on that next week. Um, the, uh, so today we're going to do wildlife sign. This will also be on your quiz that'll be due next week. Uh, and it's the first step to understanding what's out there is wildlife sign. You know, it's hard to find wildlife. Most wildlife, they're, they're cryptic or they like to hide from us. They don't want to be out during the day. If you come near them, they run away. So often the best way to find wildlife is to find the sign of wildlife, the, the stuff that they've left behind. Um, so we need to get a couple of terms under our belt that'll help us particularly with uh, identifying tracks. Uh, so the clout is a paired toenails and cervids. So if I talk about what the clout looks like, you'll, you'll know what I mean. It's the toenails. Uh, the splay is the gap between toes. So when we're talking about the splay of a um of a of a track it's kind of how wide that track sits and it's, it's it's more about the gaps between the toes how the how the track lays on the ground than how wide the whole track is stride is measured from the heel of one print to the heel of another print on the same side so if you're talking about a deer you're talking about front legs and back legs the stride is from the heel of one print to the heel of the other print and it's on that either the left side or the right side, just as long as it's on the same side. And then the straddle is the width of the track from the outside of the right track to the outside of the left track. Track pattern is also going to be important. So things uh, there are four basic track patterns for wildlife, uh, particularly mammals. Uh, so there's zigzaggers, which we call the perfect walkers. Uh, and we call them that because their rear paw or hoof lands in the exact same spot where their front paw previously fell when they're walking. We've also got waddlers where their rear foot does not land in the print of the front foot and the track shows all four prints. Oh, I should give some examples. So for zigzaggers, examples would be deer, moose, fox, coyote, and bobcat. For the waddlers, these would be bears, skunks, woodchucks, raccoons, muskrats, beavers, and porcupines. Bounders uh, have two paws that fall side by side. Uh, so they place their front feet down, and then in one motion, they leap forward, lift up their front feet, and put their rear feet in the exact same spot where their front feet were previously. Um, so these would be things like otters, weasels, and mustelids. If you think about it, they're kind of tube-shaped, the way they jump and they put their feet together as they're moving. That's kind of what they're doing. Uh, the hoppers have more of a leapfrog pattern. They often have larger rear feet, um, uh, and those rear feet tend to be in front. When you, when you look at the track, the rear feet tend to be in front of the smaller back feet. Uh, and a good example of that would be rabbits. They jump off their back feet and they kind of put their front feet behind them. So typically their back feet are going to be in, in the track. Their back feet will be in front of their front feet. So rabbits and rodents would be good examples of that. Some other keys you want to look for are, are the width of a track, the length of a track, the number of toes that are present. Does the track have nails in it? Can you see claws at all? That'll be helpful, particularly when we're looking at cats versus dogs. The depth of the track, they might get a, how large the animal is, how heavy it is, uh, how um, how big its foot is. The shape of the front feet versus the rear feet. Sometimes they they have different shapes for their front feet and rear feet. That can be really helpful for some of these animals. Does it have webbing or not? What's the shape of the clout? What's the degree of splay in the toes? 
uh, and then the stride and the straddle, which we just mentioned. So we'll start with white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer uh, leave several sign behind that they've been around. We've already talked about a few of them, which we'll review again today. But um, of course, their track uh, itself is is fairly heart shaped. Uh, it's got a convex wall on the interior, so you can see it's convex here. Dew claws may or may not be present. Dew claws are these little uh, these little claws sticking out the back of the hoof. Um, sometimes you'll hear if you, if it sees dew claws, it's if you see dew claws, it's a buck. That's not always true. Uh, dew claws being present in a track is really based on how soft the substrate is, whatever they're walking in. So if it's soft enough, they'll get their dew claws in it. If it's not very soft, all you'll see is those front two claw prints or hoof prints. Uh, let's see, a, a deer stride is typically, um, I don't know, the, the walk, it's, the, the track itself is two and a half to three inches long, and the stride is usually 30 inches when they're walking. If they're running, it's much longer. Uh, the scat will be pellet-like when you're, when they're eating firmer foods. Oh, that. Uh, so things like leaves, acorns, twigs, and grain will leave to the will lead to this um, characteristic pellet-like scat. And then softer foods like grasses, fruits, and clovers, and alfalfa will lead to this more clumpy, uh, what we call piles, as opposed to pellets. Um, typically, you're going to see the piles in the spring and summer when they're eating a lot more soft mass, and you'll see these uh, pellets in the fall and winter when they're eating more woody brows and stuff like that. Uh, of course, deer are found just about anywhere. They're habitat generalists, so you'll find this track and scat just about anywhere. Uh, some similar species would be elk, which are much larger. It's a very similar track, but it's a lot bigger. Uh, and then wild hog is also very similar, uh, but wild hog is differed, um, or you can tell the difference because the clouts are typically more pointed. So these tips here... Um, on a deer are more pointed than they are on a hog. They're usually much more rounded up here. We'll see hog here in a minute. Uh, hogs also, or deer have a narrower splay than the hog does. And they have more closely spaced dew claws than hogs do. Uh, of course, there's rubs and scrapes and sheds. We've talked about these already a little bit. Um, a scrape is what they do on the ground where they, um, they they scrape with their, their paws on the ground. They may also lick and, and rub their horns and scent glands on a branch above that, that uh, scrape. That's typical. They usually look for an area with a little branch above it so that they can kind of rub their scent glands on it. And, um, they also may rub on the tree itself to get the velvet off of their antlers at a certain time of year. So you can look for both of those together. Sometimes you'll just see a rub, rub by itself. Sometimes you'll see a rub and a scrape. Um, a rub for a deer starts close to the ground and it goes up to four feet high. When we look at elk here in a minute, they start at at least four feet, usually higher, um, and they go up to like eight feet high. So. Um, and then, of course, deer also shed their antlers every year. So if you can find an antler shed, that's another good sign that there are deer in the area. Yeah. Kind of healthy, I guess, but um, I heard, like, if you're hunting, like, do you, do you, like, do you wear a deer spray? Do they come back and you spray them that? I'm not sure. That's a good question. They might. <clears throat> um, they're definitely marking their territory when they do that. And I think if another deer comes in peas there, they definitely will. They might do it if you do. I, I, that might be an old wives' tale. I don't. I don't know for sure. To be honest with you. Uh, and then elk, elk also have a heart-shaped um, track with a convex wall, uh, and may or may not show their dew claws. Their track, though, is going to be four and three quarters inches long, so it's much larger than a deer's track, and their stride is going to be about eighty inches. So again, much larger than a deer. 
Their scale, their scat, also very much very similar in shape to a deer, but just larger. Uh, and of course, the same deal when they're eating firmer foods, they're going to have this more pellet-like scat. And when they're eating softer foods, they're going to have the more clumped up scat. Uh, elk uh, are typically, typically you'll find sign of elk near uh, fields, but also you'll find them in forests. Uh, they are a bit, uh, they're less general than a deer, but they're, they're also still pretty much found just about wherever they want to be. Uh, let's see here. They, you can differentiate this also from wild hog by the, um, it's got more pointed clouts. It's got a narrower splay and a closely closer space dew claw. Uh, it's also much larger than a hog's track and a deer track. Elks also rub and scrape, and they also shed their antlers. Uh, but elk will also, um, more frequently than deer, will wallow in mud. So you may also find a spot where they've torn up the ground and have wallowed in the, excuse me, in the mud to cool off or remove parasites or whatever. Next up, we've got wild hog. So the track is also heart shaped with a convex wall and the dew claws may or may not be present. Uh, this track's usually two to two and a half inches long. So it's even a little bit smaller than deer. Uh, their stride is about 25 inches, also a little bit smaller than deer. Uh, their scat, it varies widely due to their highly variable diet. So uh, hogs will eat just about anything. If they think it smells good or tastes good, they will eat it. It doesn't matter what it is. They they eat everything. Um, and when they have a, a more wet diet, their scat is typically more formless. That's usually in the spring. And then when they have a more dry diet, they're going to have pellets or clumps like you see here in the picture. You can find this just about anywhere. Uh, hogs are also habitat generalists. They like to to be just about anywhere. They don't like to uh, be around people though. Usually at least the feral hogs don't cause we're, we're hunting them pretty intensely. Uh, so they will run from us, but they do, you know, they're just about everywhere. Uh, let's see here. If you want to differentiate the track from white tailed deer, you can look for the more rounded clout. So you can see particularly in this C picture, you can see how round this, uh, this track is. Uh, also, the dew claws are typically more uh, wider sp or spread out wider, and the splay of the track itself is usually wider. So they usually they spread their feet out wider than deer do. Deer, uh, I'm sorry, hogs cause a lot of damage to crops. Um, they'll, you know, of course, they'll eat crops. They'll knock stuff down. Uh, they'll also do what's called rooting, where they dig up the soil looking for tubers or or insects or just food in the soil. So they'll make a big mess of that, which can be a, a big problem if you're in a, um, particularly in a, in a place with sensitive plant communities. Uh, and they'll also wallow. So if anytime there's mud around, they'll, they'll roll around in the mud. This can also tear up soil make, or make problems with soil erosion and can affect sensitive plant communities. Very destructive wild hogs. Coyotes, so we're getting our first of our dog tracks here. Uh, you've got, you can see the difference here, coyote, large dog, and wolf. Look at the splay of their claws here. So the coyote, you've got two straight claws here at the end. On a dog, domestic dog, typically those claws are going to be pointed a little bit outwards. And on a wolf, they're going to be pointed a little bit inwards. So that's one good way to know. Um, of course, coyote is um, not not that large from about two and three quarters inches or less in length. Usually the front uh, track is larger than the hind track. Uh, another thing you can look at on dogs versus cats, we're going to be looking at some cats here in a little bit. Uh, dogs have one, uh, what do we call that, one lobe on the leading edge of their tracks. You can see all of these have one lobe. Cats usually have two lobes here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what I want to say. Uh, about the track. Wolf is the largest. It's typically two lobed. Domestic dog uh, will vary depending on, you know, the, the, 
breed of dog as to the size that the track will be, uh, but it's usually two lobed as well. Again, look at look at the claws to tell the difference. The display of the claws. Um, and the coyote will out will also have an extra little. Sometimes we'll have this extra little ridge here on the back of the track. First, you know, compare that to the other two. You can see the difference. Uh, when you're comparing them to foxes, the gray fox and red fox both have a callus ridge. So there's like a ridge right here that'll stick out into the track. Cat, uh, all the dogs usually show claws in their tracks. Again, it depends on the substrate. If it's if it's a hard substrate, their claws might not make an imprint. But if it's soft, you'll see claws on a on a dog, uh, or a wolf or a coyote. The cats will never show claws in their tracks. Cats have retractable claws. So they only put their claws out when they're hunting. So when they're walking, you don't see any claws in their tracks. For the scat, uh, coyote usually has tapered tips on the ends of the scat uh, with, a, with a long tail. Can you see that here? This long tail sticking off the end of the scat. Uh, if they're eating mostly animal protein, they're gonna. It's gonna be a pure black scat, and it's gonna have a lot of hair in it. But if they're eating uh, other stuff, it might be a little more brown and have less hair in it. Uh, coyotes can actually be pretty general in their diet as well. And usually, you're gonna find coyote scat in open brush country and woods. Some other things to look for to know that coyotes are in the area. They have dens, so you can look for a den. Similar to this hole in the ground here, usually there'll be a skirt in front of the den where they've kicked dirt out, uh, making their entrance and exit easy. Often you're going to see tracks in that skirt because it's a nice soft, soft substrate to leave a track. Uh, they'll also defecate and urinate in the same place repeatedly. Uh, you, in most other animals, we refer to that as a latrine. And we call it the same thing in a coyote, that, this latrine where they just they use the same place to go to the bathroom over and over again. Uh, and they also typically scratch near their scat pile. So you'll find some scratches in the dirt uh, near their scat pile. Another good sign that you're looking at a coyote. Red foxes. Um, usually the claws are present in a red fox track, just like all the other dogs. But you're also going to notice a lot of fur between the toes and the pads. And there's also a callus ridge uh, that sticks out beyond the fur. You can kind of see it here in this picture. That's the callus ridge. And there's a smaller one. Uh, depending on the left or the right, sorry, front or back, the back track has a larger callus ridge than the front track, usually on a red fox. The track itself will be about two inches long. And again, you can again you can see the fur imprinted in the scat or in the track, especially if it's a soft substrate like this mud here. You can tell there's fur there. Uh, the scat itself is kind of similar to uh, coyote. It's got these long tapered tips with long tails. Uh, there's often going to be mouse or rabbit fur, also berries, insect parts, and bird feathers or maybe even some plant remains in the uh, scat. That's a good way to tell this is a this is a fox, not a coyote. Again, size, foxes are smaller than coyotes. Their scat is going to be smaller than a coyote scat. Uh, but also the, the makeup of it. Foxes are going to have um, just a lot more uh, just varied stuff, insect parts, berries, fur, all of it together, plant material. Uh, there's also going to be a distinctive musky odor for fox scat. So it'll be, it'll be more musky than anything else. Uh, red fox is pretty general in their habitats. They like to be from forest to fields and even in urban areas with available cover. So you can find the scat just about anywhere. Uh, the callus ridge and the fur along the, the paws will help you differentiate this from wolf, coyote, and dog. Also, the size, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be a lot smaller than wolf, much smaller than coyote. And depending on the dog breed, it's probably going to be smaller than the dog track, too. Uh, it's slightly larger than the gray fox, which we'll look at in a minute. 
It does usually show the claws. So again, this is another way to tell this is a this is one of the canines and not one of the cats. It's got claws in it. Uh, and usually there's only one lobe on the leading edge of the paw print. Um, whereas again, we talked about bobcats or cats are going to have two lobes. So again, you're you're always when you see a track like this, you're always saying, "Is this a dog or is it a cat?" And that's your first step to figuring out what you're looking at. Uh, some sign that they leave behind: they have dens, and you'll often find small bones near the den entrance. And there may be multiple dens for each fox each season, so you may find multiple dens in an area. The den hole should be a little bit smaller than the coyotes. Uh, here's some, just to you can get at what we were talking about a minute ago, the shape of the uh, metacarpal pad and the splaying of the toes. So this is the met this is the metacarpal pad. You see on red fox, it's mainly round. On a domestic dog or all the dogs, you're going to have this one lobe. On a domestic cat, you're also going to have one lobe. On a bobcat, you'll have two lobes. One lobe, no claws on a, on a cat, any of the cats. Presence of hair also helps distinguish it from the other uh, canine species. Same with gray fox, you'll have some hair present in the track, but not as much as um, not as much as the red fox. And usually, gray foxes don't actually show their claws. They're there, um, but they just don't. For some reason, they doesn't show up in the track all the time. It may, but it doesn't always. Uh, there's a lot of fur between the toes and the pad. The ridge on the callus sticks out beyond the fur, and it's thicker than the red foxes. So if you remember back to the red fox slide, that had a really thin callus ridge here, probably closer to this shape. And on the gray fox, the back of the hind leg track is going to be pretty thick on the callus ridge, and the front track is even thicker than the red fox's callus ridge. A little bit smaller than Red Fox, so the track itself is only about 1.8 inches long, where the Red Fox's track was about 2 inches long. Uh, same deal with the scat. It's tapered on the tips with tails. Uh, it's often going to have mouse and rabbit fur, berries, insect parts, bird feathers, and plant remains in it, just like a Red Fox. Uh, gray Foxes prefer habitats with fields and woods near riparian areas, so you're not going to typically find Gray Foxes uh, in neighborhoods and things like that, that's usually more of a red fox deal. Gray foxes are a little more selective in their habitat. Uh, they usually uh, have their dens in wood piles, rock outcrops, hollow, tr hollow trees, and brush piles. So you don't typically find a, a ground. If you find a ground den, that's probably a red fox, not a gray fox. Uh, and gray foxes can climb trees. They're the only canid that we know of that can actually climb trees. And they will do that frequently. Now our cat, um, the only cat we're going to cover because it's the only one we really have here, is the bobcat. Usually you will not see claws in a cat track, no matter what species of cat it is. Um, again, that's because cat cats have retractable claws. They only put them out when they're hunting. Uh, you will notice two lobes on the leading edge of the track. That will tell you this is a bobcat and not one of the other cats. Look for that two lobes. It's also a good way to tell you, look, between a coyote or a dog or whatever, that's a bobcat. It's got the two lobes on the front. Uh, the front track is usually wider than it is long. And toe three is usually sticking out a little farther than the other toes. So this is toe three right here. You can see it's a little bit ahead of, of toe two. <clears throat> usually these tracks are about an inch and a half long, so they're not very large. Uh, the, the scat is typically uh, constricted and segmented. Uh, usually has blunt ends. And dry scat usually falls apart at these constrictions. So you can see where there's kind of these areas where the scat gets constricted. You can really see it in this top picture. And that usually, as that scat dries out, that usually just falls apart immediately. 
Uh, you'll find this in habitat with dense cover, especially areas with rocky ledges. That's what they need for breeding. Uh, and of course, the track is going to be significantly smaller than a mountain lion track, which is usually about four inches wide. And a bobcat track is about an inch and a half. Bobcats are very small. People don't understand how small bobcats are. They're, they're like a big house cat. They're not that big. Uh, some signs that uh, that you have a predatory cat in the area. Uh, for one, they like to cache their food. This is another reason we know there's not mountain lions here because we're not finding a lot of full-grown deer cached out in the forest. But you might find a fawn um, or some other you know small animal uh, with some leaves or sticks kicked over it. The cat's going to come back and visit that later and eat more on it. Uh, they also scratch at the ground. And they may they leave claw marks on trees, just like a house cat would. They need a scratching post. They'll do the same thing. They'll just use trees to do that to, as their scratching post in the wild. Next up, we got eastern cottontail. Uh, so this is our most common rabbit here. Uh, this is one where you'll notice the front track is jumped by the back legs. So these little feet here, these are actually the front feet. And these bigger feet are the back legs. If you look at a rabbit when it sits, it puts its feet down and its back legs are in front of it. And then it hops. It does the same thing. So these tracks are typically going to show this pattern with the back feet in front of the, of the front feet. Uh, it's got asymmetrical toes. So you can notice that these aren't really symmetrical feet. They're kind of weird shaped. Uh, the hind footprint is about two and a half times longer than the front feet. You can see the, the hind foot is much longer than the front feet. Uh, that makes it really obvious that you're looking at a rabbit. You won't confuse a rabbit with anything else. They got really long front or hind feet, which are in front of their front feet. And the front feet are really small. The scat is really small, it's dry, and it's often flattened spheres. Uh, typically, it's hard to find rabbit scat because rabbits are what are called coprophages, which means that they eat their own scat, especially the fresh stuff. As it comes out, they like to eat it. Um, and the term for that is coprophage. coprophage. Um, let's see. Rabbits are found just about anywhere that grass and suitable cover are located. So they're all over the place. Uh, let's see. They're difficult to tell this track from other cottontail species. Uh, location is usually the key. So we do have swamp rabbits um, in the southeast. Usually the swamp rabbit leaves its fecal deposits on stumps, logs, or high ground in wet areas. Um, whereas a cottontail is usually not out, or eastern cottontail is usually not out in the swamp. Some other signs of rabbit, uh, they, they like to girdle and strip bark off of trees, off of small trees particularly. So you can see they've they've girdled this tree here. They're stripping bark off of here to eat. We also talked about when we looked at deer, uh, the difference between deer brows and rabbit brows. Remember, deer lack upper incisors. So when they, when they eat a twig or they eat something off of a branch, they have to tear it off. Whereas rabbits have upper and lower incisors, so they make a nice clean cut when they're when they're eating browse. Next up, we got raccoons. Raccoons have five fingers and toes. Their track looks somewhat human-like. Usually the uh, fingers and toes themselves get bulbous towards the end, so you see they get kind of wider and rounder, a little fatter towards the end of the uh, toe they have a naked heel and the front feet are usually smaller than the in the rear feet uh the scat can be highly variable because raccoon diet is highly variable they'll eat just about anything they can get a hold of uh, but it's usually even has an even diameter has blunt ends and it'll often contain crayfish parts or fruit It'll have blocky ends and uh, contain many seeds. Again, that depends on what they're eating. If they're getting into your trash, there might be a different, they might have something different going on. Typically, you'll find uh, raccoons near river and stream drainages, but also urban areas and wood piles. 
Uh, possums leave a, a similar track, which we'll look at in a minute, but the fingers are thinner and the thumb is more articulated out to the side. Uh, possums have opposable thumbs, so their thumb is like sticking out to the side. We'll look at that in a sec. Another thing to look for are latrines. Uh, raccoons usually defecate and urinate in the same area. Uh, maybe multiple raccoons might use that same area. Um, these are usually communal latrines, so you'll find these latrines when anywhere there's raccoons present. If they're in your house or on your house, they'll leave a latrine in or on your house. Um, so that's, an, that's just a good sign that they're there. It's some damage that raccoons can cause to your house. The possum, a super unique track. It is also kind of human-like, uh, but look at the opposable thumb on the back the back leg. It sticks out to the side. I mean, it's, it's really articulated out. Um, the, they're longer, the toes and fingers are longer and thinner than, uh, than they are on the raccoon. You might also see a tail drag. Sometimes that's helpful for us, for us, um, track ID is what's the tail doing? Some animals let their tail drag behind them. Uh, possums will do that if they're in a really, you know, if they're walking through mud, you'll see that tail dragging behind them. Sometimes they'll lift that tail up, so it's not always present. Uh, the print is wider than it is long, and the hind print is larger than the front print. The scat is highly variable and lacks a distinct form usually. Uh, a single scat may be up to four inches long. That's pretty long for a, for a little possum. Uh, and usually you're going to find those near rivers and stream drainages and urban areas, very similar to raccoon, lots, same place. They're all hanging out in the same place. Uh, so you'll find their scat and tracks in that same place. Uh, again, raccoons, are a little, tracks are kind of similar, but they're a little more human-like, uh, and they don't have that opposable thumb. And that's it for possum. Uh, muskrat, of course, is a rodent. It's a large rodent. Uh, the track has four toes on the front foot and five toes on the hind foot. That's pretty unique. It's unique as far as what we're covering, at least today. So if you see anything with a track that's got four toes on the front and five toes on the back, then that's a, that's a muskrat. The toes are usually very slender. The hind foot is wider than the front foot, and they usually show their tail dragging behind them as well. Uh, muskrats are usually walking around in mud. They like to be next to water. So what they're walking around in will usually show that tail drag. The scat is oval and it's three to four times longer than it is wide. That doesn't mean much because it's really small anyway. I mean, it's like a, they're a big rodent, but they're, you know, not that big. The, the, the scat's pretty small. Uh, it's usually deposited in a sticky mass on a log at the water's edge. So if you find a bunch of scat like that clumped together near water, you're probably looking at muskrat. Uh, you, again, usually found on the edges of marshes and lakes. I see this differs from beaver uh, with the size. It's much smaller than beaver scat. Uh, and beaver tracks as well are much larger than uh, muskrat tracks. Beaver scat also contains wood. Beavers are the only thing we know that just eat wood. So there's a lot of wood in beaver scat. You won't find that in you won't find any wood in a muskrat scat. Uh, beavers have webbing between their toes, so that's another good thing to look for. If you see webbing, you're looking at a beaver, not a muskrat. Uh, and the tail shape is also different from a beaver. So you've got a long tail, and it's actually laterally compressed, so it's been flat, like somebody squeezed it this way. So it kind of sticks out like that. It's what we call keeled, uh, whereas a beaver's would be other way compressed to be flattened. Muskrats make uh, middens and mounds and huts. So middens are these areas where they uh, a lot of times are eating shellfish or some kind of uh, crawfish or even uh, oysters or um, uh, mussels as you can see here in the picture and they'll collect, they'll just sit there and they'll eat, 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 eat and they'll pile the shells up uh, they'll usually do that at the same place every time they eat. And so we call that a midden, which is where they've piled all these shells and, and remains of their food up. The mounds and huts, 
same two words for the same thing. Uh, they look kind of like a beaver house, but they're they're mainly made out of grass as opposed to wood. Um, muskrats can't cut down trees like a beaver can. They don't eat wood, so they'll their their mounds or middens will be made out of uh, out of grass, you know, large uh, herbaceous vegetation at least. Now the beaver. Uh, for the track for a beaver, there's five toes on the front foot and the hind foot. So uh, same amount of toes on front and hind. That's in the, you know, another way to say this is a beaver, not a muskrat. Uh, the hind foot is going to have webbing on the toes. And it's going to be very large. Beavers have a really, really big feet. You'll see the tail dragging behind a beaver. They ne beavers, that tail is heavy. They cannot lift it up and walk. So that tail is always going to be dragging behind them. They're usually walking through mud, so you're usually going to see that tail drag. And it's usually going to obliterate the tracks. So you're usually not even going to see their feet. You're just going to see that tail drag. Uh, the scat is seldom found uh, because it's usually deposited in water and it just kind of breaks up immediately. Uh, but when you do find it, it's marshmallow sized and it consists of almost entirely of wood chips. And you'll find it near water, of course. And that large hind foot with webbing differentiate uh, beaver from just about every other rodent. Uh, so some other signs to look for would be uh, logs and dams at, and lodges. Of course, they eat uh, the bark of, of wood, of trees. So if you find trees that have been stripped of their bark, probably a, a beaver that did that. If you find trees that have been felled in this manner, where they've been chewed all the way around till they fall down, that's probably a beaver. Uh, of course, they also build their dams and lodges uh, entirely out of wood, the wood that they cut down. Uh, their lodges typically have multiple entrances so that, you know, if something's chasing them, they can get away and you don't know which way they went into their house or how they get in and out of their house. It's usually, um, uh, they're trying to keep that a secret. They also leave slides next to the water. So these areas where they just kind of slide into the water and it tears up the vegetation. It's usually a nice little muddy track. And uh, you might see several of those around an area that have beavers. Mink, I got a couple more slides to get through. So mink have five toes. They might show some webbing. They have a chevron-shaped pad uh, in their track. So chevron, think about the gas station chevron. They've got those uh, colorful, like, half triangles. That's a chevron. That's literally what a chevron is. So mink are, have that chevron-shaped pad. It's about one inch inside, so it's very small. A good ID clue for mink is they like to double stamp their tracks. So they take their rear foot and put it on their high, on their front foot track, and it's usually a little bit off. But So you'll see two tracks there right on top of each other. The scat's long and slender cords that tend to fold back on themselves. It can be black or brown in color. It's usually tapered at both ends and will contain remnants of fish or crayfish. It's usually oily and smelly. And they're often repeated deposits on the same logs, which we call post offices. You'll find it near water. And it differs from other small mussels by the webbing between the toes. Um, well, we're out of time. I tell you what, we'll finish this up in lab just real quick. So I'll finish the recording in lab. It won't, it'll be very short. There's like three slides left, which are all different species. See you at one o'clock. Let me know if you got any questions about anything.